Dzień dobry, znowu przed kamerą internetową mówi David Snopek. Dzisiaj będzie bardzo krótki filmik, a tylko chciałbym powiedzieć, że powoli wracam do blogowania. A, no, przez cały czas byłem aktywny na forum Biblio Birda, opowiadałem na komentarze i maile w miarę mojej możliwości, ale również a, wkrótce będzie a, parę nowych filmików. W weekend właśnie nagrałem materiały na dwa filmiki na temat e, USA. E, również mam plan na filmik i artykuł na temat nauki e, języków. To najprawdopodobniej będzie następny, ale żaden nie jest skończony, więc zobaczymy. No, e, nagrywam teraz właśnie za naszym nowym mieszkaniem. E, bardzo dużo się zdarzyło od mojego ostatniego filmiku. A między innymi przeprowadziliśmy się do nowego mieszkania. A teraz mieszkamy właśnie nad rzeką Milwaukee. To wspaniałe mieszkanie. E, może nagram filmik o nim. E, no co jeszcze? E, byliśmy w Kalifornii na wakacje. E, jeśli jesteście zainteresowani, no dużo tam nagrałem, więc mógłbym to trochę pokazać. E, no i... Właśnie udzieliłem wywiad na English with Katie. Kamera trochę rusza, to niedobrze. No, mam nadzieję, że to jest w porządku. No, był wywiad na English with Katie. To była audycja na żywo po angielsku. Katie to Amerykanka, która teraz, mie która teraz mieszka w Japonii. Przepraszam, dawno nie mówiłem po polsku. Um, no i rozmawia, rozmawialiśmy o wielu rzeczach, e, na przykład nauka języków, e, podróże po świecie, e, dyskryminacja w USA, e, poczucie związku ze swoimi korzeniami wśród Amerykanów, e, rozwój osobisty i wiele innych ciekawych rzeczach. Więc e, no, zapraszam do słuchania. E, mam nadzieję, że będzie Wam ciekawy. E, za chwilę Podam kilka minut z naszej rozmowy i również będzie link w opisie do całości. No, to chyba wszystko na dzisiaj. Do następnego razu. Cześć! And then what's a typical day like for you? Well, my life is really chaotic. Um, I'm a freelance software developer. I also have a couple of, uh, you know, online projects and online businesses I do. Um, so, you know, I could be doing anything. Uh, today is a, a very unusual day. I'm doing this interview with uh, you this morning. At noon, I'm having a uh, conversation in English on Bibliobird.com, noon my time, uh, so that's four hours from now, uh, just with um, you know my fans and the users on Bibliobird to allow them to practice their English. And then at uh, 6 p.m. in the evening, I'm giving a presentation <laughs> about uh, business and software development. Uh, so it's, it's a very... Uh, I don't know, lots of meetings, lots of uh, uh, interesting things today. Some days I'm, you know, just sitting at my computer writing code. Other days I'm, you know, in meetings with clients. It, it could be anything. Hmm, that's great. And the language learning part of it, can mm -hmm. you tell us how you got involved in that? Absolutely. Uh, so, first of all, I'd just like to say that... Um, You can learn a lot more about uh, my experience on my blog, uh, linguatrek.com. Uh, right now, talking off the top of my head, I'm sure I'll forget something and some important details. Uh, so if you want to learn more, uh, please visit my blog. Um, so yeah, I started with language learning the way I think most people do, uh, just being required to learn a language in school. Uh, for me and most people in the United States, that is Spanish. Um, I took six years of Spanish in school and learned nothing, really. Uh, I did everything the teacher said, uh, you know, even got pretty good grades, but at the end of it, you know, I, I really don't speak any Spanish. Uh, so language learning wasn't part of my life until uh, later as an adult, I made a couple of friends from Belarus, uh, Russian speakers uh, who had immigrated to the United States, and uh, they were planning a trip 
back to Belarus and to Russia and invited me to go with them. So I thought, wow, this is really cool. I'll be able to go see these countries from the perspective of people who are from there. I'd better learn some Russian. <laughs> so uh, that was really when I, I started learning language on purpose, that it was actually something I was interested in and motivated to do. Uh, so I uh, took a course at uh, the university, the local university here for, I think, only a semester, maybe a year before I went on this trip. It was very sudden. Um, didn't really learn very much, but the experience of going to Russia and, you know, communicating with lots of people who didn't speak any English, it was really interesting. And I suddenly became, uh, you know, very interested in traveling and languages. And uh, when I came back, I kept learning Russian for a little while, uh, you know, still never got terribly good at it. I uh, stayed uh, in this course at the university. And then at uh, some point, I decided uh, to start learning Polish. Uh, Polish and Polish uh, culture and history has always been very interesting to me because I have distant uh, Polish ancestry. So I started learning Polish and uh, it was going about the same as with Russian. I took another course at the university. We were taking lots of grammar tests, learning lots of rules. Uh, and I wasn't, you know, I knew from Russian that I, I didn't uh, successfully learn to speak that language very well. And I was worried the same thing was going to happen with Polish. So I decided, you know, to try something completely different. And I ended up reading a lot about the theory about how languages are learned, how the brain works. And I tried reading Harry Potter in Polish, reading and listening to Harry Potter in Polish. And, and uh, ultimately ended up learning Polish to a very high level using this and other totally non-traditional techniques. So my blog, and uh, I wrote an e-book about my experience and about language learning, is all trying to uh, tell people, you know, how languages are learned and give some advice and some tips and uh, some non-traditional techniques about how you, you can learn a language on your own and hopefully be successful, unlike uh, how many people are unsuccessful in traditional courses in school.